One complication that we frequently see in equations are parentheses. Let's take a look at an expression that has some parentheses in it. Let's suppose that I have 3 being multiplied by 2x minus 4, so I'm multiplying 3 by the difference. And what I'm left with is this expression. Now notice this is, an is not an equation. I'm not trying to get x alone or anything here. I just want to think about what this means and what values it takes on. Now, if you think about the order of operations, and again, that's our exciting little PEMDAS thing here, right? The first thing that we would have to do in this expression normally is what's inside the parentheses. But here, I can't do what's inside the parentheses. I don't know what x is, so I can't do the 2 times x to get anything. And then once I have that, I can't subtract 4 because these are not like terms. So it seems at this point that I'm kind of stuck with the parentheses as part of this expression. But I'd like to be able to simplify it a little bit more. In order to do that, we can use a special math property that's called the distributive property. And it's a property that goes along with multiplication and addition. This is the property in general. If you have some number being multiplied outside the parentheses, with something being added or subtracted inside, we can get rid of the parentheses by taking whatever is outside and multiplying it by each thing that's inside. We're distributing the A into both of the things that are inside. That's where the name comes from. So here, I can multiply the A times the B, and I can multiply the A times the C and add those together. So this is the distributive property. If we were to apply the distributive property here, I'm going to do the same thing. The 3 outside is being multiplied. So I can get rid of the parentheses by multiplying that 3 by each thing that's inside. What is that going to look like? Well, I'll do 3 times 2x minus 3 times 4. So I'm multiplying those through. Now when I do that, 3 times 2x gives me 6x minus 3 times 4 gives me 12. Okay, let's try another example here. Suppose that we have negative 2 being multiplied by the difference of x minus 5. In this case, again, I can use the distributive property because I have something being multiplied by a group that's inside. In this case, I'll multiply the negative 2 times the x, which gives me a negative 2x. Then I can multiply the negative 2 times the minus 5 if you think of this as a negative 5, the negative times the negative makes this a positive, and what I end up with is negative 2x plus 10 when I use the distributive property. So this is a really cool property that we can use to get rid of parentheses when they show up in equations that we're trying to solve. So let's look at a couple of examples of equations with parentheses. Suppose I have 3 times the sum of x plus 1 is equal to 21. Okay, I want to get rid of these parentheses so I can use the distributive property and mul multiply that 3 through everything that's inside. 3 times x gives me 3x plus 3 times 1 gives me 3. And now I have just a standard two-step equation that looks like just like the ones that we solved in the last section. I want to get the x by itself. It's being multiplied by 3, and we're adding 3 to that. We get rid of the weakest link first, doing that reverse PEMDAS, to get rid of a plus 3, I'm going to subtract 3 from each side. 3 minus 3 is gone, leaving 3x behind. 21 minus 3 gives me 18. Not done with the problem quite yet. I still need to get the x alone. It's being multiplied by 3. So I can divide by 3 on each side. That gives me x left alone on the left side, and on the right side, 18 divided by 3 gives me 6 as a solution. Let's look at just a couple of other examples here. Uh, let's look at this equation here. Suppose that I have 12 equals negative 6 times x minus 2. Okay. Again, I have another problem with parentheses, and so I can get rid of the parentheses by using the distributive property. Multiply that negative 6 through. Negative 6 times x is negative 6x. Negative 6 times the negative 2 gives me a plus 12. And I still have the 12 on the other side of the equal sign. Again, just like we've done in all of our problems before, stay vertical. Keep everything going so you can bring down anything that doesn't get 
undone or canceled along the way and not lose anything. I want to get the x by itself again. Multiplied by negative 6, added 12. 12 is the farthest away, so we get rid of that first. It's being added, so we subtract 12 from each side. By design, the 12 minus 12 on this side goes away, leaving me just with the negative 6x. Now, if you look at this, the 12 and the minus 12 can go away on this side, but then that leaves nothing for us on this side of the equation. It's real important that our equal signs stay balanced and we have something on each side. So think of this as subtraction, right? 12 minus 12 is equal to 0, so that I'm going to use the number 0 on that side so I have something written on each side of the equation. I still want to finish getting the x by itself. It's being multiplied by 6, so I can divide by 6 on each side. Uh, dividing by negative 6 and timesing by negative 6 undo each other, leaving me just with x. 0 divided by 6 gives me 0, and 0 is a perfectly valid solution to my equation. In fact, just like always, you can take your answer and put it up here. 0 minus 2 would give me a negative 2 inside the parentheses. Negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12, and my solution checks out. Okay, let's take a look at another piece that we can do here. Let's suppose that I have this. 4 times... 2x minus 7 plus 1 equals 13. Okay. Before you do anything with any problem, so this is getting looking even bigger still, right? That's okay. We're going to be very methodical. First, you want to get rid of parentheses. We're going to use that distributive property. Multiply the 4 through. 4 times 2x gives me 8x. 4 times a minus 7 is going to give me a minus 28. Then I still had this plus 1 here equals 13. Okay. Now, once you've gotten rid of parentheses, what you want to do next is always check to see if you can simplify each side of the equation. If we look on the left right now, I have 8x minus 28 plus 1. I can write that a little bit easier by thinking of this as a negative 28 plus 1 is a negative 27. So I can combine those plain numbers together to get a slightly nicer looking expression. Now I have 8x minus 27 equals 13. If I want to finish solving the equation, now I'm down to just two steps multiplying by 8 and subtracting 27 to get the x alone. So first thing we want to get rid of adding or subtracting, so we're going to add 27 to each side. Here, minus 27 plus 27 is gone, leaving me with 8x. On the other side, 13 plus 27 gives me 40. Then if I want to finish solving my equation, I can divide both sides by 8 to get rid of that 8 that's being multiplied. And I'm left with x equals, and 40 divided by 8 is 5. Okay. So get rid of your parentheses, simplify each side of the equation, and once you get to this point, you should be able to um, solve whatever remains. And it should break it down to our... Um, two-step equations just like this one here. Uh, as one final example, let's take a look at this. Let's suppose that I have 3 minus 6 times 2x plus 4 equals 5. Okay, I want to solve this equation for x. x is trapped inside of this parentheses. I've got a lot of stuff going on. What I want to do here to solve is first I want to get rid of the parentheses. Now notice in front there was a 3 there before. I still have to keep that 3 out in front. And now I'm going to go through and distribute the negative 6 through each of these um, values. Negative 6 times 2x gives me a negative 12x. Negative 6 times 4 gives me a minus 24 equals 5. 
Now I'd like to be able to continue solving the problem. I can simplify a few things here on the left. Notice the left has quite a bit going on. Um, I can put the plain numbers together to make this look a little bit simpler. 3 and the minus 24 will give me a negative 21. And then I had a minus 12x. Again, make sure you're keeping whatever is right in front of those numbers, keeping the sign of those values as you go through. Okay, so I have now a negative 21 minus 12x equals 5. And now I'm down to a two-step equation process. At this point, I want to get the x alone. I'm multiplying by a negative 12, subtracting a 21, so I can add this 21 to each side negative 21 and positive 21 go away. And I'm left with negative 12x is equal to 26. And then to finish, I need to, right now it's being, the x is being multiplied by negative 12. So to undo it, I need to divide by negative 12. In this case, negative 12 divided by negative 12 goes away. And what I'm left with is x equals, now 26, or negative 12 does not go into 26 evenly. A positive divided by a negative means I have a negative number here, and so I have the fraction negative 26 over 12. Again, just go ahead and think of, if it doesn't go in evenly, think of it as a fraction. Do make sure that your answer is as reduced as possible. In this case, both of these numbers are even, so I can divide the top and the bottom each by 2, and I end up with negative 13 over 6 as my final solution. This one would be a little bit trickier to plug in here in your equation, but it should all work out um, to give you a true statement when you're done. Again, be very careful. Keep things in order. And if there's a sign in front of that, treat it as a negative when you're doing your different operations. And that will keep you out of trouble.